Let's bring in Robert Almasi, former El Paso U.S. Marshal and retired Deputy Chief of the El Paso Police Department. Robert, always great to see you. Uh, first, your reaction to Mayor Eric Adams' visit to El Paso. Are you glad that he came? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, I wish he would have done that sooner. But he's actually, the mayor of New York actually thought different El Paso than what President Biden saw. Right before President Biden visited, the city was cleaned up under order of the White House. Border Patrol agents went out there and rounded up all the migrants to give El Paso the, the, the nice look. Uh, so Mayor Adams going down there actually got a, a dose of reality, and, and he's, actually, he's absolutely right. This was a border crisis that had turned into a national crisis, and I've been saying that many, many times, and it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. And when, it, when is it going to stop? And this is a result of, of uh, not having a plan to deal with the issues on, on the border. What is it like in El Paso right now, Robert? Are the numbers still down from the record highs that we saw a few weeks ago? Yeah, absolutely. And and to be honest with you, the reason those numbers are down, I, I, I talked to the uh, of some officials in El Paso on a daily basis. And uh, after uh, Mayor Oscar Leeser declared an emergency, which resulted in Governor Abbott sending the National Guard out there and extra Texas DPS troopers out there, uh, it actually stopped the bleeding, or at least slowed the bleeding down, and the numbers went way down. And that took uh, the National Guard having to install barbed wire there so they could get a control on, on the situation. So something needed to be done. Uh, you want to call it drastic? So be it. But something yeah. needed to be done. And, and as a result of all of that, the numbers have gone down. Yeah, you know, that uh, situation is sort of surprising to me because in Arizona, they were using those containers to secure the border. And the Biden administration made them move the containers. But you have what's going on in El Paso. The administration hasn't said anything about that yet. Are you surprised by that? Yeah, I am surprised, but that just tells me that it's a different situation in El Paso than what we saw in Arizona. Uh, definitely, I believe those containers were uh, on federal property, so I think that things are different in, mm. in El Paso. Believe me, if the uh, federal government or the White House uh, would step in and say, you can't do that, they would have already done that. Let's talk about the new numbers that we're getting. Uh, over 250,000 migrant encounters in December alone. That is a record high across the board. Uh, those people coming from over 140 different countries. What's your response to that? Well, you know, uh, that just goes to show you that you got all these people from all these different countries uh, wanting to come to the greatest country in, in the world, basically. And, and, and I don't blame them, but it's just so overwhelming, uh, not only for the border, but all these cities, as, as you saw, where the Mayor Adam from New York had to go down there and get a first-hand hand look. So it's very unfortunate. The other thing that is not being taken into con consideration are the gotaways. And that means a gotaway is when these migrants are spotted either by surveillance system or, or eyes of the Border Patrol agent uh, coming into the United States illegally, and they're not apprehended. And those, to be honest with you, those are my biggest concern, because uh, you're probably going to see more criminals within those groups. Well, let's talk about the Biden administration's response so far. Um, Mayor Eric Adams is calling on the administration to do more. Do you think that they will? Well, I think it helps that Mayor Adams went down to the board, but what I would really like to see is all the mayors from these cities being impacted by the crisis to come down to uh, the El Paso border, take a first-hand look. They need to band together, all the mayors, they need to band together and put pressure on the White House to do something, to come up with a plan and stop the bleeding, yeah. because uh, these cities just can't take any more of it. Yeah, and, I, you know, a lot of people would say that Mayor Adams doesn't have clean hands when it comes to all of this either, because, you know, when he was make, doing his press conference uh, in El Paso, he said that a lot of migrants are reading websites and they see things like New York City streets are paved with gold for them and they'll automatically get employment. And he was alluding to the fact that that's not true. But in many cases, Robert, it is because the city is paying for hotel rooms for illegal immigrants in a luxury hotel. It's also a sanctuary city. So aren't those policies exactly what are driving migrants to make this dangerous journey in the first place? 
Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, those kind of things, paying for their hotel, staying at luxury hotel rooms, that word spreads among the thousands and thousands of migrants. So they say, well, all we got to do is make it into the United States, make it across the border, go to New York, and we'll be put up at a, at a, at a hotel. So I think things like that incur encourage the migrants to um, come into the United States and, and go to, to New York. It's not actually helping the situation. Yeah, it's a crisis that's certainly got, not going away anytime soon. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Have a great day. Absolutely. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.